We're going to look at the area under the normal curve, and we're going to use the standard normal curve to help us find probabilities, where probability and area are very closely related to each other. We can find probabilities using the tables in the back of the textbook, and I do give you a link online that you can follow. These tables give us the positive and negative z-scores rounded to the nearest hundredth. The body of the table gives us the area under the curve or the probability to the left of the corresponding z-score. And that's extremely important to understand is the tables that I use give you the area to the left of the z-score that we're looking up. And this will make more sense when we actually do the examples. But when you go online and, and if you just Google search uh, standard normal curve or z-scores, you might get a table that gives you the area between zero and the z-score rather than the cumulative area to the left. So you do have to be careful with that. And again, it'll make more sense when we actually get through this video. Okay, I'll also mention before we start that this is probably a video that you're going to have to pause several times and go back and watch several times in order to understand what's going on. Okay, this is a very important topic uh, as we go through the rest of the course to understand this. Okay, we can use our calculator to check our answers and we'll go through the steps on this using second bars and then normal CDF and we put the left z-score or the right z-score. Okay, and again, when we actually do an example, that'll make more sense. Okay, so find the probability by, loca by locating z-scores in the table and draw a graph of each. So we want to find this notation is telling us the probability of z being less than 1. Okay, so you want to look at that as what is the probability that z is less than 1? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a normal curve. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but try to be as neat as you can. Okay, we're, it's a z-axis because we're looking at z-scores. And we know that in the center, if you're looking at z, remember the mean, median, mode are in the center of a normal curve. But on our standard normal curve, when you're looking at a z-score, the mean, median, mode are all zero standard deviations from the mean. So the number in the middle is always going to be zero when you're looking at a z-axis. So finding the probability that z is less than one. So we want to know what area or what is the probability that z is less than one. So you will locate, well, a standard deviation that is one above the mean. Okay, that's a z-score of one right there. So what we'll do is we'll shade where z is less than one. So anything to the left of one is what we're shading. Okay, now remember that 100% of the data is under the entire curve. So that includes the area that we're looking for to the left of one, but also the area to the right of one. Okay, that's, that's, that's an area of one or 100%. Okay, so what we do, is we go to our table. Okay, now, when you look at a table or if you Google search this or search this online, somewhere it should, it should mention how they're finding the area. So notice this one, it says the table entry uh, for Z is the area under the standard normal curve to the left of Z, and then they have everything to the left of Z. Okay, so Z's right here, shaded this way. Okay, so we want to find a z-score of 1.0, 0. So notice in the column right here, we have a z, and then it says 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. It goes all the way down to 3.4 in this table. 
and then each of those are to the nearest tenth. And then the row across the top, 0 .00, 0 .01, 0 0.02, and so on, that's the hundredth place for the z-score. So if we have a z-score of 1, that's really 1.00. So 1.0 is this row, and then the hundredth place of 0 is the first column. So 1.00 gives us 0.8413. Okay, so what that means is, on our graph, the area to the left of 1, so the area from here all the way to the left, okay, all that area is 0.8413. Now, some people prefer to write it in the actual diagram, 8413. Okay, that's up to you, um, whatever you're more comfortable with. Okay, so that's essentially saying the probability that z is less than 1 equals 0.8413. Okay, that is your answer. Okay, once you get the hang of these, they're not too bad, but it does take a little while to understand exactly what's going on. Okay, so, so don't, don't get overwhelmed if you're a little confused right now. Okay, I'm not going to go over every single one of these. I'm going to have you work on some of these and then, and then mention a few things. But I'll do the next one with you. Find the probability that z is less than 2.34. So what we do is we'll draw the normal curve. Remember, 0 is in the center because we're looking at a z-axis. 2.34, that z-score is 2.34 standard deviations above the mean. So we're just going to look on the right-hand side over here, okay, fairly close to the, um, to the end over here. I'll label that 2.34 because you put your z-score on your axes. And if z is less than 2.34, we're looking at the area less than or to the left of 2.34. So we go back to our table. We'll look up a z-score of 2.34. So here's 2.3. And then the hundredth place is the 0, 04 right here. So if we trace our way down, we have 0.9904. So that area, 0.9904. So the area from 2.34 all to the left is 0.9904. Okay, if you want to think about it in terms of percentages, what that's saying is 99.04% of all the data will lie less than 2.34 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, for the next one, negative 0.85, you're going to draw that curve. Okay, and I have it drawn out here just to save time. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead. Okay, and then if you want to look up the area that is less than point, uh, negative 0.85, well, now you notice on the graph we were just looking at for the for the normal curve, that table had positive z-scores. On the other side, or the next page, it has the negative z-scores. So if we look up negative 0.85, so here's negative 0.8, and then over to the 0, 5 column is this one here. It looks like 0 0.1997. Okay. okay, so that area is 0.199. I'm sorry, 0 0.1977. Okay, now if you just go back to those three and look at the calculator directions, okay, the second bars, 
Okay, so I'm just going to show you. Okay, let me go back to that first one. Okay, notice that above the bars key it says DISTR, that's for distribution. So the distribution that we're going to look at is the normal. Okay, we're going to choose normal CDF. Okay, now that just stands for cumulative density function, which is not something I'll ever ask you in this course. But um, the C means you're, you're cum you have a cumulative probability, and that just shows you're starting at, at the left end and adding all the values up till you get to the z-score you want. Okay, so you choose normal CDF. We have the left z-score, then the right z-score. Well, the left z-score, as you go way out to the left, we have 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. In theory, that goes on forever to negative infinity. Now, you can't put negative infinity in your calculator. Different people in different books will tell you different things. But generally, if you put like negative 1,000 in, that's basically saying you're going a thousand standard deviations to the left, which is a lot of a long ways out there. Okay, so the left z score, because we can't put in negative infinity, put in negative a thousand, and then comma the right z score. So your right z score or your upper z score is positive one. Okay, press enter and it'll give you 0 0.8413. So normal CDF, the left z-score, negative 1,000, comma, the right z-score, which is 1. Okay, press Enter. Now, sometimes your answer on the calculator might be a, a, a 1 or 2 ten thousandths. So the, the fourth decimal place, it might miss it by 1 or 2, but that's just because your calculator is using... Um, a function to actually find what the area is and the table values in your Z in your Z tables are rounded values okay so just be aware that sometimes the calculator will give you a slightly different answer than the table does okay and then on the next one there's the calculator instructions and I'm not going to show you again you can go through and actually enter those values in to make sure that you're correct Okay, um, I'm going to go on to Part D right now. Okay, in Part D, you want to find the probability that Z is greater than 2. Well, I'm mentioning this one now because the Z greater than 2 is different than a less than. When you have a Z is greater than 2, what you're looking for is the probability that Z is greater than 2 or to the right of 2. So notice on here, notice how I'm shaving to the right now. Shaving. I'm, sh I'm shading to the right now. Okay, well, when you go up and look at 2 in your table, so when I look up 2.00 as a positive z-score, okay, so 2.00, so that first column, 0.9772. And this is what you have to be careful of. This is the area to the left of that z-score. So in order to find the area to the right of the z-score because of the greater than 2, you have to do 1 minus that answer of 0 0.9772. You're essentially saying, remember that 1 represents 100% of the data minus 97.72% of the data gives you this left over, basically 2.28% of the data. So as decimals, this is how that shows up. 1 representing 100% minus the area to the left gives you the area to the right. Okay, so the next two are similar to that one. And for sake of time on this video, I'm just going to show you those two answers. Okay, I want you to try those and see what you come up with. And then I'll show you the calculator steps on those. Okay, so these two are similar to part D, where you have to do 1 minus because we're looking at the area to the right. The calculator steps, 
It's a similar idea to the first three, except now when you do the normal CDF, just looking at the last one here, Z is greater than 0.52. Well, now, greater than your shading to the right of 0.52. So now the left Z score is positive 0.52, and the right Z score, you're going way out to the right now. So now you're, you're in theory, going to positive infinity. So we'll just put positive 1,000 in for the right Z score, or the right end Z score. Okay, moving on to the... Next page, we have area, oops, sorry, between two data values. So negative one is less than Z is less than one. The way you look at that is Z is between negative one and one. So Z is less than positive one, but Z is greater than negative one. Remember in, in elementary school, the alligator opens toward the bigger number. So Z is greater than negative one. So we're essentially saying that Z is between the two numbers. Okay, and again, just to keep this uh, moving along, we're gonna draw that on the graph. Okay, ignore all the decimals up here for a minute. So we have negative one and positive one. We have zero in the center. Okay, now, when you look, well, if you want to find the area in between the two, remember when you look up negative one on your table, looking up negative 1.00, that gives you 0.1587. So the area to the left of negative one is 0.1587. If you look up positive one, the area to the left of that is 0.8413. So if you look at the area that we're actually trying to find, we're trying to find this area in between the two. So if you look at 0.8413, all that area to the left, that includes the 0.1587 area. So to find the area in between them, you subtract 0.8413 minus 0.1587, and that will give you the area in between them. Okay, and again, number two, or number two, part H will be similar to that. And the answer is up here, but I want you to go through and actually find these numbers in your table and draw the curve and do the subtraction so you can see how that works. Okay, but again, I'm trying to keep this brief, so I'm gonna keep on moving. Notice that the calculator directions for normal CDF, now the left Z-score is negative one, the positive Z, or the uh, right Z-score is positive one. Okay, and the other one, the left z-score is negative two, and the right z-score is positive two. Okay, you always put the z-scores in left comma right, or smaller comma larger. Okay, then there are two more examples of z being between two numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna put the answers up here. This is just for you to practice. Okay, and then I'm gonna keep moving on. Okay, and then the very last two. Again, I'm gonna put the answers up for that so you can see those. Okay, just a bunch of different of examples for you to practice on. And um, you, again, you probably wanna watch this video more than once. I know it's long, but um, it's extremely important to understand how to use the normal curve because we're gonna use it many times throughout the rest of the semester. It's related to much, many of the topics that we do.